In this video, I'll show you some new CSS properties you probably haven't heard of yet. They'll help you speed up your development process and make your code cleaner and more efficient. So, let's get started. Controlling the size of form fields has become much easier with the introduction of the CSS property field sizing. Previously, when entering data into an input field with a fixed width, the characters would eventually get cut off once the field was full. Another common issue was with the width of a select field, which was determined by the length of the longest option in the dropdown. For example, if the longest option in the list was particularly lengthy, the select field would stretch significantly to accommodate it. Now with the field sizing property and the content value, we can solve these problems effectively Effectively. Let's apply this property to our form fields and see the results. After reloading the page, when filling a text area, it expands vertically to accommodate the added content. The width of the select field adjusts based on the selected option, no longer being affected by the longest option in the list. The input field stretches dynamically as more characters are entered. Similarly, the width of file input fields now depends on the length of the file name, ensuring a more responsive design. The width of our fields now adapts to the content. Anchor positioning. Anchoring is a fresh and declarative way to position elements relative to each other. It's perfect for menus, tooltips, selects, labels, cards, settings dialogues, and many more. With anchor positioning built into the browser, you can build layered user interfaces without relying on third-party libraries. It takes two elements to create an anchor relationship, the anchor and positioned elements. The anchor is the element that the positioned elements orient to. Turn an element into an anchor with one line of CSS. The positioned elements are the elements that are positioned relative to the anchor. These point to the anchor they want to be positioned relative to, with position anchor and a second line of CSS to specify the side or area the position should be in. In the following demo, the cute egg is the anchor, and the text over easy is the positioned element. The position area property offers all sorts of options. The demo uses the logical property value block end, but there's center, button, and tons more. An often requested CSS feature is the ability to animate to height auto. A slight variation of that request is to transition the width property instead of the height, or to transition to any of the other intrinsic sizes represented by keywords like min content, max content, and fit content. From Chrome 129, you can use the interpolate size property or the calc size function to enable smooth transitions and animations from lengths to intrinsic sizing keywords and back. The easiest way to enable this behavior is have the entire page opt in. To it by declaring interpolate size allow keywords on root. In most cases, using interpolate size should be sufficient. If you need more control over things, such as doing calculations with the resulting pixel value or transitioning between the same two intrinsic sizing keywords, use calc size instead. From Chrome 131, you have more options to style the structure of details and summary elements. You can now use these elements when building disclosure or accordion widgets. In particular, the changes introduced in Chrome 131 enable the use of the display property on these elements and add a details content pseudo element to style the part that expands and collapses. For example, to create a horizontal exclusive accordion, apply a flex layout that flows in the row direction to each details element. In addition to using more display types, the content of the details element automatically gets wrapped in a details content pseudo element. All children of the details element except the summary get slotted into that pseudo. You can use this pseudo to control the part of the details disclosure element that expands and collapses. Did you know that the backdrop pseudo element didn't inherit styles from anywhere? Historically, it was isolated, meaning it couldn't access inheritable properties from its originating element. But starting from Chrome 122, this has changed. The backdrop pseudo element is now a proper part of the DOM tree, allowing it to inherit inheritable properties from its associated element. What does this mean in practice? You can now override custom property values on specific elements, and backdrop will recognize them. For example, if you have an open dialog element with defined CSS variables. Its backdrop can now access and use those properties. This update makes styling models and overlays much more flexible. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.